Hey, it's Joe Klein, it's me, Automator, and uh, what you're going to see here is a video. We were on with Spawnova. I was talking to Spawnova, and Isaiah joined in, and uh, we were demonstrating. I asked him to demonstrate some of the functionality of Git to Spawnova because he's using Notepad++, and the integrations into Git is just amazing. And so I figured, hey, let's hit record. So you're so Isaiah's I think is actually in mid sentence. Um, it's going to seem a little weird, but it's some really good, valuable information. If you're considering using Git, if you're, you know, being sharing your files on there, if you're working with other people, I highly recommend you take a look at VS Code. We also did a great webinar uh, on VS Code. I'll put the link up above where you can go check that. Or we have a whole page on setting up VS Code and everything. It's a very solid editor. I think it's awesome for, you know, tracking your changes and what you're doing. And you'll see in this video, it's worth sitting back, kind of letting it play in the background and check it out. So hope you enjoy it. Um, subscribe and like the video. I'd really appreciate it. Is, so what happens with this particular uh, thing is that if you if you have a new version and, and something stopped working, you can see exactly where, when you modified the line that actually caused the problem. That's awesome. It right. is pretty cool, yeah. And, if, and, and basically, if you are working with a lot of people, it tells you the name of who changed it. And here That's it says you. Cool too. Right, it says you. But uh, in other situations, you, you can... Um, you can see who actually made the change, when, and what is the commit that has to do with that. So it is the commit that says refactor, convert properties to static variables. And then I go here, go to my commits, uh, where it was this thing. Let me see what the changes were. So here are all the changes for that thing. That's it. Red is that it was removed. Green that it was added. Oh, so that is the change. That's it. So basically, as I'm saying, like, the the ease because remember that all of this you have to do it in the console like you would have to do git log right and you would have to yeah right you have to check all that in the console this makes it so easy to find which is the line that you want to check what commit it was you click on the commit and now you see all the changes related to that commit and now you can spot every single one of the <laughs> bugs that this commit introduced for example <laughs> So, so that's the reason why I switched to VS Code. Dude, it makes Git, GitHub, and debugging a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> that's all. It definitely looks appealing. Mostly, the reason I'm using Notepad plus plus is because I work with like so many different languages. Like on a daily basis, it'll be like Auto Hockey, C plus plus, LUA, and stuff. And just the ease of use of Notepad um, is quite nice. Uh, and I've never, you know. It's kind of like the reason I'm getting the auto hockey version two is because I have to relearn something new and I, you know, I just kind of want to keep doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, basically, first of all, uh, well, again, I, I, I sound like the guy that is converting the other ones to, <laughs> you know, like I hate that. I'm just mentioning the things so that you know that they're out there because one of the reasons why I wasn't switching to VS code is because I didn't know what it could do. After you know, yeah. then you start missing stuff in your own editor. You say like, oh, huh, it, uh, can I do that? Um, but basically, first of all, of course, as this is a, a very um, current editor, you have access to every single language out there, right? Out of the box, C++, you know, uh, Lua, Java, JavaScript, JSON, everything is, you can access all of them. And why would I say that they are a little bit better is because VS Code has something that is called a language server provider. Now, let me show you something interesting. I'll be back in a few minutes. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me show you something very interesting. This is a class. It's called API Call. Now, notice yeah. that it's green, right? Yes. Now, here, I'm returning from that class a variable. Awesome. Notice that the whole thing is coded as a variable, right? Because it is a variable. Here's the thing. That is because I'm using AutoHotKey version one, the language for AutoHotKey version one. Yeah. AutoHotKey version two, there's a guy, a Chinese guy, that used the language server for AutoHotKey version two. Nobody has done that for AutoHotKey version one. I'm planning to do it because I like okay. it. Okay. 
But let me show you what happens. And, and, and this code is actually Auto Hotkey version two. Just if you didn't know, this is actually Auto Hotkey version two. It's almost the same as Auto Hotkey version one. There's not much that is going to change, but whatever. Yeah. Here's the thing. Language service providers give you something that is called semantic highlighting, which is funny. When I switch to Auto Hotkey version two, now, every time I mention, so now I know that this is a class. Now, every time I mention that class, it is highlighted as a class. That is nice. That is extremely nice, especially when you're actually, for example, if you, if you create, let's say, a function, right? You create your own function. Notice that it's kind of like a variable right now. Yeah. As soon as I put the parentheses, that is still not a function because it doesn't exist. Okay, now if I go ahead and define that function somewhere, notice that it changes to a function because it exists now. Okay, you, you're seeing what I'm saying? This I mean, I gotta, I gotta like just the syntax highlighting in VS Code is really appealing no, because Notepad plus plus is just ugh, it's you know it's not great. I, I'm just gonna tell you, like, 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 and this what I'm showing you. It's the restricted version of it because Auto Hotkey does not have support for whatever VS Code can do. If you grab a language like C++ or JavaScript, dude, the things that you can do in that language are crazy. Like for example, you can you can you can just grab code that is that is kind of like repeated over and over, and you hit Control dot, which is kind of like it, it gives you code actions, and you hit Control dot and say like refactor that into a function and it grabs in every single file in that project wherever that code is present it converts a, into a function that is pretty cool dude you have no idea when i <laughs> i cannot do that without a hotkey because out hotkey does not have actions set up available yeah because the guy hasn't actually coded because it's a lot of work right but the things that you can do and actually check this out api call right Say you want to go ahead and rename that. The normal way would be to uh, find that name in every single file that you have, okay? So you would have to go ahead and in any file that that word shows up, you have to go ahead and search and replace. Yeah, I'm familiar. I do that every now and then. Okay, I'm gonna show you something very interesting. The problem is sometimes you want to replace that, but it is in a context that you don't want to replace it because it, it was in a comment. Yes, or it, yeah. Okay. In VS Code, you have what is called symbol replacing. You hit F2 and you change the name of the symbol, new name, and it just changes it everywhere in every part of your code where it makes sense to change it, not in comments, because in the comments, that doesn't make any sense. It's not a simple. Yeah. Um, and not uh, in other situations. So I know that if I hit F2 and change the name, I know that I'm making the change in the correct way. Like, I don't have to worry about it. I mean, it looks fast too, snappy. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is, it's not just in this file. It's everywhere in your code where it finds yeah. it. That, I have to say, right now, only works with Auto Hotkey version two, the, the, the language for Auto Hotkey version two, because Auto Hotkey version one does not have a language server provider. But in, in codes like C, JavaScript, not only the, it does it, but it's better than the Auto Hotkey version of it. So I, I'm like, dude, if I, again, I'm not trying to convert you. <laughs> I'm just telling you, those are the things that are available that you probably don't know. And after you get used to them, like you, you're going to say, like, does does no plus plus have that? No. Why would I use it? Like, wh why why would I want to try that anymore? You know, that's the, really I was hardcore Notepad plus plus. All my videos, actually, Joe can tell you this. All my videos from ten years ago, it was all in our in Notepad plus plus because that's what I used. Like, that's the only thing that I used all the time. I mean, I use um, Visual Studio. 2019 or something for C++, but the, mm -hmm. what I hate about it is it just, it takes a while to start up and it's like, I just want to get into something immediately, you know? 
that's what VS Code is all about. VS Code and Visual Studio, they share 90% of what they do. The only difference is VS Code is for now. You just click on it and you're there. Um, the other, you know, Visual Studio is kind of like a, it's built for enterprise use. Like when you have a group of 500 developers that have to do stuff synchronized, Visual Studio is the way to go, even though it takes a little bit longer to load. Yeah. But if it's I think for I, you, I, I just didn't know at the time. I, you know, as somebody who was just starting to get into, I just said, "What do I use to do C plus plus?" And I was like, "Here, use this." So that's yeah, what I did. yeah, 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 yeah. But basically, um, the reason why it feels like oh, it's too heavy, it, it is, it is actually overkill for what you're looking for. That's what happens. It, it feels it is, like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It is not. I'm, not. I'm not really saying like it feels. It, it is like you have a jackhammer to put a nail on your on your wall, right? So that's what happens, you, you know? Um, but VS Code came to solve that. Um, they used Atom. Atom was the editor of choice at the time. And I, I actually learned about VS Code because of Atom. Atom was a free editor that was very cool. And, and, and Microsoft said like, mm, I'm gonna get that one. <laughs> yeah, it was free. They just took it. Oh, Joe, this is one of the examples where Licensing is a it it killed Atom. So Atom was a free project. Everything you look at it in here is amazing. It's exactly the same as Atom. The problem is Atom was a project for a few guys. It was really good. It was starting to take off. Microsoft saw it. Oh, that's free. They took it, put some developers to make it look prettier. Like they made it look prettier because it looks better. Yeah. And and they said, like, you know what? We also own GitHub. Why don't we integrate those two things? They integrated everybody, it, it, they killed Atom right there. As soon as I everybody saw that you could do that, like everybody switched and Atom died. And that is the issue with licensing. Having so much a uh, permissive license to do whatever you want, that's what happens there. And they are not gonna make any money out of it. Like, and Microsoft is going to make the billions. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, because they, they now have a few interesting things going on with GitHub and VS Code on the web. Like, you don't have to install VS Code on your computer anymore. Oh, you don't so have do to. like a web browser based one? Yeah, so, so if you are in GitHub right now, just go to GitHub. And this is the weird thing. Just enter into, a, 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 into your, into your um, repository, right? Yeah. In your repository, just hit the period key on your keyboard. Just the period. Oh. And it opens up your web editor for that repository. Oh. And it is a VS Code thing. Uh, it, 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 and, and it has all the options that you could have in the computer. The only thing that changes a little bit are the hotkeys. But everything else you can do. I mean, it looks just like uh, the one you're running. I'm desktop. just telling you, it is, it, it is the one. <laughs> the desktop. You don't have to even install it. Now, That's when you cool, actually. when you have a company, and and now you, for example, you make changes to this repository. For example, if I make changes to your repository, and I hit OK, for example, I fix a bug or something, it automatically creates what is called a pull request on your repository, which tells you, hey, I made some changes. Merge it into your is there, project. You have the link to his Git, right? Why don't you go in right now and, and make a change so he can see it? Yeah. So this is the fun. So there's a few things before I go into that. Check this out. So you can go to VS Code dot dev, which is a website, and you have VS Code on the web, exactly the same as you could would see it on your computer. So you don't need to even install it. That's the first thing. Right. Uh, that is perfect. Like you, you, and you can open folders from your computer and everything. So again, that's what happens when you have a very big company with a lot of money, right? Grab your code and convert yeah. it into something cool. Everybody will switch to that right away. That is one. Second of all, <clears throat> they are giving you as well, like, um, virtual computers just to develop. So it is called. Oh, really? Yes, so you have Git Dev, I, I don't know, Git Dev or something like that. 
Um, it is, aha, uh -huh, I think it, this, I don't know. No, this is not the one. But there, there is a such, I will, I will link to it later. The, the thing is that uh, in GitHub, there is a section, I will see where it is, that they have virtual computers for developers, which have all the tools for automatic test testing and everything. So for example, uh, you know, if you're working with a huge project and right now you're in a laptop, you're gonna have, you know, computer power issues, right? Because your laptop is gonna yeah. take a long time to compile the code. Now you can rent a virtual developing machine that is extremely fast and it has testing tools and stuff. And you just rent it for a little while and it's really cheap for you to do your code, whatever. So they, they are having a lot of services that are really great. Now here, for example, one of the things that I was talking about, oh, look, you had an issue with your code. Now I just, I'm just in your repository. Let me just go ahead and change that. I do not have to clone your, your even though I can. I can just yeah. grab the thing, clone it, or fork it up here. I don't have to do any of that. I just hit period in my um, um, keyboard. And now I can, I can just go ahead and, oh, new example. So let, let's say like, it doesn't work. And new examples. I save it, right? And it actually saves automatically. Now you see that it has an M right there. That M means that it was modified. I go to my source control, added. Uh, this is my state change. I add a message, quick change. Let me see. Oh, yeah. So you're trying to make changes in the projects you don't have to write, you don't have right access to. You want to create a fork and then saying the, the changes to you? I said, yeah, fork repository. It is going to create on my, on my account. Now I have a fork of your project. And now my pull request is called quick change. I said, enter. Um, let me see. It is going to say a branch. This is the patch one. It created a branch. It's doing everything for me. Switch to the pull request. Here it takes me to your project now. And then you will see what happens. Here is the pull request. Let's go ahead and oh, go okay. back. To, so now if you go to your um, GitHub repository, you will see on the tabs, there's one that says pull requests. If you can go ahead and take a look at that. Yeah, I see that. Why don't you share your screen so we can. Yeah. I'm recording this, by the way, I thought, hey, you know what? Yeah. Uh, more for you, Spano, in case a lot of it, there, you know, sometimes there's so much stuff. Yeah, gets... this is all new to me. I mean, it helped me out. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's new for everybody. There we go. <laughs> so if you, if you share your screen, what is going to happen is like in your repository here on the top, you do have these pull requests, they're going to show in there. Those are proposed changes. You can de decline it. You can say, no, I don't, I'm not going to merge that, which is what you're going to do now, right? But you can click on it. So you can click on it. How do I, uh, how do I, how do I, I like, click here? Yeah, yeah, you click okay. on it. Now you can see, uh, I could have a description. I would say like, this change is for this. This is what it's going to do. This is what it fixes, blah, blah, blah. You can select the option to merge it after you check on it. But if you want to check the code first, click here where it says commit. So when you click on the commits, you see what it is, just click on the code, and there you go. And it tells you what changed. If it, if, if it was a lot of changes, you could see, go ahead and see the, the changes. I thought you said you'd see his your name there. Um, the, yeah, so basically as I did it all through the web, on the web is grabbing my user ID from, from GitHub. Okay. But if I do it on my computer, my computer has my name set up as the alias, okay? That's what happens. But in general, uh, as you can tell, you can review the code, see if that is something that you would accept or not. And if you do, you, you can actually tell them like, no, you know what? Uh, if you change this other part, then I will merge it, right? You don't have to accept it right away. That makes and, sense. Right, and in the end, you can just go ahead and review changes and that's that's where you tell me like no you know what uh, yeah this is something or you can just simply approve it if it is approved you go now to where you were before like the conversation and now you can you can approve the code which mm -hmm. was here merge it right 
because and, and again this is the, the 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 idea behind pull requests is that i put a change a proposal and all the developers can comment on it and they can oh well i have from 10 developers seven approved it okay oh yeah see right here it's got a plus one minus zero no, but that, that is actually how much code changed. It was just one line that changed. Okay, okay? so that's not it. But the pro here, it says one approval. So if, if, if you have, if you have uh, 10 developers and seven approvals, the person who is in charge of the, of the repository, in this case you, because it's yours, can go ahead and merge it or decline it. So only the person with right access can go ahead and um, merge it. Or in the end, you can say like, no, close it without merging it. Because you can merge first and then close, or you can just close the pull request saying like, no, I'm not going to accept this change without merging it. You know, So it gives you this teamwork kind of way, but notice, and this is the point that I was trying to make, VS Code and GitHub are so fully integrated that I didn't even have to have VS Code installed. I didn't have to have your repository on my computer I went to your repository, made a change, hit OK, and it did everything for me, right? So that's why, in the end, I, I, I did not want to be on the, you know, on the, on the, the thing that everybody's using it. But then I realized maybe they are using it for a reason. Like well, they're I using it for a reason. Uh, <laughs> actually, I already went and downloaded it. You kind of sold me on. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, uh, they are doing it for a reason, you know. Like, uh, yeah. So, is that you? Yeah. You mentioned, and you mentioned them before I hit record. There were two. You said make sure you get two. Uh huh. Um, yeah. So, um, I thought it was for Git, not for auto. Right. So let me let me guide you a little bit in this section here. Um, if you can pull a little bit the extensions here, uh, so that we could read a little bit more here. Widen it. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So just pull uh, right from from how here. How do I pull. do that? Yeah, just pull a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I just pull it in. Okay. No, so no, no. So hold on. No, no, no. Just grab the edge right there and pull I, it to the oh, side. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh -huh, there we go. Mean. So um, this one is the one that I'm using right now. The reason for it, it is not the original one, but the other people who were actually starting it, they stopped uh, giving uh, updating the code. The one who is updating the code is the one for AHK plus plus. That's the one for our hotkey version one. Um, that's the one that I would install. Uh, the other one, and the other one is our hotkey two language support. That is for this guy. So I would, I know that you're not coding in our hotkey version two right now. I would actually have it anyways, because at some point our hotkey version two is going to be there. Well, I want to, <laughs> I definitely want to, um, migrate over to it if I can. I, I feel like honestly with um with this great syntax highlighting, it might be a little easier using VS Code. A lot. And and and, and I, I you know what, Joe, this is gonna be a very nice, a very nice uh example. So we're gonna have we need somebody that is not a programmer doing this as well. So we need, for example, Dylan. Or or you. Okay, you you, you as well. So here's the thing. We're gonna have a programmer and a non-programmer switch to version two and see what their thoughts are at the end of the journey, right? Just to see what happens, because I think, and we have both commented this, if you are a programmer, you're more likely to say this was a very good change. Like everybody who has switched to AutoHotKey 2, including me, I was not into AutoHotKey version two. I changed and I like, uh, nah, I'm not coming back. <laughs> but for a non-programmer, how would that be as well? So that's that. Now for Git, I would like you to search for Git Lens and Git Lens. Uh-huh. That's the one. Okay. And the other one was Git Graph. Uh, what was it? Git Graph. Yes. Git Graph. Oh, I thought I was typing. Okay, um, it must be a space then. Yeah, the space. That's the one. Those two things, I do have a few other extensions, but you will learn about them later on. But like they make your life so much easier. Like uh, uh, when I'm working with CSV files, each, each section of the CSV um, has a color. So when you're scrolling down on the CSV, 
And you have a lot of commas. You don't know in which column you're in, but with the color, you know where you're at, right? I'm not, I'm not too familiar with CSVs. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I, I don't ever use those are the type of things that you will see a lot of very interesting, um, extensions out there. Uh, but yeah, don't worry. Now, here's the thing. If you start it, so if you can make it bigger here, what you would get is like the quick installation guide for it. No. Aha. Here it is. Open quick setup. This is, this is our, these are the type of little details that you can do. And they give you always examples of what it looks like. You just take a few minutes to just verify what they are. This is your blame. It tells you who changed it and when. I think that's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. You could see it on the line or on the, on the, so remember all of these things only work if you have a, um, a, uh, a GitHub repository. So when you start. Yeah. So if you start with an empty folder, you're not going to be able to use these things. But as soon as you create and initialize a repository, and again, I showed you, it's really easy. Well, this, here's a question, actually. Um, how how would I go into loading mine on the website into here? Yeah. Okay. So uh, and this is where uh, this gets very easy for you. Just click on file. Okay. And it would actually tell you to open, um, try open a folder. Let me see something. No, because it, it actually gives you the option. It says like open a new, hold on. Can you, can you click here where it says get started or just click here where it says get started? Yeah. It, oh, new repository. There you okay. go. And now you just put the link to it. So from GitHub, you can just use the, the, the link that we used to clone. There is a, there is a way to do that from the menu as well, by the way. On the menu, you can just open a, a, a clone a repository. Just paste the list. Well, you know what? I know where it is now. It is here. You see where, where, where the thing is right here? Yeah. Okay. Right here, it will tell you, you know, oh, okay. clone a repository. So I remember that it was there now. So it's like but a shortcut. It is, yeah. So basically, you do that. It is going to tell you where you want to put that folder because it's going to open a folder. It's going to download it and put it there. No, don't put... Well, well yeah. yeah. You can do that, yeah, too. Okay. That's what it's going to be. It's going to do it. Would you like to open the clone? Yes, open. It actually asks you if you trust it. Like the folder. I trust everybody. <laughs> yeah, you can you can set that up like to not ask you or for certain folders. And now you have your repository right there. And the awesome. funny, yeah, the fun thing about this is that uh, if you click here on Git Graph, oh, so you have okay. AutoHotKey version two already. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, I have it. Uh, the syntax for that, but it. How do, okay, no. how do I, how do I change it? Is it right here? Yeah. So, so yeah, okay. just click in there. You just select and, and, and I, if I were you, I would configure okay. the language to open without a hockey version one first. Yeah. Just click, click there again. Yeah. Click okay. there. And it says configure lang uh, association for HK files. And you would just select auto hotkey. Perfect. No, not, not output. Oh, no. I think you selected the wrong one. Just click again at the, the, Oh, this okay. One, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. I thought okay. that you clicked on the output one. Yeah, that's it. So again, you have here at the bottom your uh, encoding uh, stuff. So you could kind of like change the okay. encoding if you need to, the tab sizes, if it is spaces. Oh, I like that. I quite like right. that. Yeah. So you have access to the most common stuff. Um, and again, if you make any changes, this button right here at the bottom, at the bottom, it allows you to kind of like synchronize your changes from the, from the repository. You can set it up to do it automatically. The fetch automatically fetches every certain time. But whenever you have changes and you synchronize here at the left, this is where you have your Git stuff. This is where you commit changes, add changes, you merge changes. You have your commits down here, your stashes. If you know a little bit of Git, all of everything that is related to Git, you can find it right here. You know, I'll have to learn all this. Like I said, yeah. I'm a complete newbie, so don't worry. But basically, this is where Git is. 
and here's where your files are at. Gotcha. Yeah. So in general, those are the two things that are that you're going to be using the most. Yeah. Um, and just to synchronize with your other things, just by clicking on that button down there, you're good to go. After a while, you're going to get used to it. And and if you really dive into the things that you can do, especially with debugging, like right now, if you is this kind of like a an example? Yeah. Just place a break right here. Uh huh. Okay. Now just click on running the code up here. Ooh, you can run it from here? Yes, sir. Oh, but I can't run it here though because uh, I need to, how do you do the, is it like dot, dot, to to include something a folder above? Oh yeah, you're just just exactly as you did, but not two of them, not, not just slashes, just one. That is okay. one folder above. All right, let's try that then. Um, allow it, whatever. Okay, so it tells you that uh, no end. Why not? Mm, no on. environment. Yeah, hold on. It's trying to run the version two of our hotkey. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so what you're gonna do? Let's go to the um, to the extensions down here, and on our hotkey plus plus, click on the. Oh well. Oh, you have two of them. Yeah, should I get rid of the stop one? Yeah, the one from Slovesk, he stopped giving support to that. That's the that's okay. the problem. Gotcha. So yeah, just click on that one. It seems to be that, uh, and then extension settings. I'm sorry. Uh, extension settings extension right settings. there. So uh, it looks like you are pointing at, is that the correct location for auto hotkey? Uh, probably, yeah. No, but U64 is, uh, yeah, so the only thing that you have to do is point to the correct auto hotkey thing right there. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I have it in a 32 bit right now. Uh -huh, then, then just change the, the, the 64 to 32 bit. Let me make sure that, yeah, okay, so that is the right folder. Right, so then you just change that to 32 -bit. It would just be auto hockey, right? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, really yeah. if that's the 32 bit one, yeah, that's it. Now, if you go ahead and try to run it again, it should actually give you the correct. Ah, there you go. So now notice that it's okay. stopped, right? Oh, yeah, notice, yeah, I see that. So notice, now go here on the left. Oh. Right here? Uh-huh, yeah. Oops. And now clicking global here. Ooh, and look at nice. scan here. Just click on scan. And there you go. You have your variable. And actually, now if you double click on one of those, you can modify the variable. Well, Let's these would be pointers. Okay, to, uh, but, 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 but in general, you see this out update here? Just double click on it. Okay. And put zero in there. That's cool. This is, that's and, now, really cool. and now if you run the code or if you go line by line on your, on your debugger, if you go, because you can go line by line instead of just, uh, here, you can go line by line. Right there. Okay. Uh huh. So it goes Step line over. by line. Notice that it actually kind of like jumped over. You can see where it's going to land the debugging dude. The debugging, you're not never gonna come back. <laughs> you're never gonna come back. And this having is access, nice, yeah. yeah, and having access to all your variables, global and local. Trust me, I know that you're not gonna come back. <laughs> I know that you're not gonna come back. No, no, I mean this is like like I was, you know, having to debug earlier because a lot of this is like, you know, C and all hockey inter intertwined, and there's like one little error. It took forever to track down, but if I had something like this, it would be really nice. And now, it, and this is the thing, other languages, C++, JavaScript, and all the things, have those things by default, and you're used to them. And then in yeah. AutoHotKey, you couldn't. VS Code, at least, the people who created the things for VS Code, they said, like, hey, let's do this for our hotkey too. And then, because I didn't have that in Notepad++ ever. So I was Show like, them also, maybe you already did this, but the output debug, how you can use that. Oh stop. yeah, you can you can stop here the program now. Okay. And on line four, you can use the output debug. Output debug. This I've here. never used this before. Is that what it looks like? Oh, whoops. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like that. And the text it, that is a force expression. So just put in there, um, or just put the variable a h a a. 
So A underscore, then auto hotkey and then, uh, yeah, the version here. Just use that one. You can hit down and then tab. Oops. Just hit down and, and tab. Yeah, there you go. And now, I'll, you know how it is when you're learning something new. You, you go to your habits. So. Yeah, of course. <laughs> just now hit run again. Just run the script again. And notice at the bottom here, you have the mm. output, the debug console. So now you don't have to do message boxes. You just put your output debug and you, you will see that right there all the time. So and maybe you know this as well, uh, is that that if you give this to someone else, you don't have to change that. Right, of course, because like they, they're not going to notice that you're... <laughs> so, so the output debug is something that is very cool because you can get the messages down here when you're programming. And if you give the code to somebody else, they're never going to see those messages unless they have a debugger open. So I've never used this before. Is this... um? Does this get removed when you compiled it, or is it still back no, in no, there no, when no. it's compiled? It's back in there. It's, it's there. The thing is that it is sending it into a special type of queue. Windows has a queue for the debug messages, okay, which is the standard out. And what happens is, well, it's a part of the standard out. But what happens is you cannot see those messages unless you have a tool that actually watches them. Monitors, yeah. Right. So there is a tool... Uh, called debug view or something like that, that lists from every single program out there. For every single program out there, it just debugs, uh, it captures all the messages. Now you, you're going to get the message box because it jumped to the second part of the else. Because it didn't find any pixels. Right. But, but yeah. it's cool though. It's just like, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. Right. And, and, and I would just set, set it in a way that and, and now this part here is just debugging messages that nobody can see except you as a developer or somebody who has a de debug window open. So in general, those are the type of things that, yeah, there you go. So that is something that the, the, you can leave right there, pass it to, uh, whoever, uh, you want. And if they say like nothing is working, well. Yeah. You can just take a look at the debug, um, see how it works for you. But usually what we do is just log in into a file and tell them to set up, send us the file, you know? It's so generally easier, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but in general, this is, this is basically what the output debug is for. When you're coding, you don't want this, this program to stop. You just want to see when those messages come up. And if you pass the code, you don't want people to see that. Well, output debug is just for that. I mean, it's really cool having a, a debugger that actually works for auto hockey. So yes. I am familiar with debuggers because I do a lot of like um, reverse engineering, you know, going over like stacks and stuff. And, and uh, it's really cool, but it's like, man, it'd be great to have my own program, you know? So that's really cool. Definitely right. Really nice. Now, now here's the other part. Here's the other part. Um, the auto hotkey version two debugger is verse better than the auto hotkey version one for now, the, because the guy, the Chinese guy that is making version two, he is like an, a very advanced programmer. And he, he, he seems to have like things in other languages that he wants to have in auto hotkey. And he yes. has been doing that like really like, for example, one of the, the, the things that do not work very well in the debugger of auto hotkey version one, um, if you can, Type right there, or, or, or if I could show you, share my screen. Instead, yeah, go ahead. Right, so that, that one would be a little bit faster for me to show you. Is that, say, for example, I um, open code. So I have code here. Let's go ahead and open, uh, close this thing. Let me save it. I love this line right there. I, should, I noticed that, like, so it yes. warns you if you're running a version different from the one it was programmed for? Yes. So uh, if you have a requirement here, and, and that in Auto Hockey version one, you can use it too already. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know it's for Auto Hockey one as well. Uh, so, so no, it, it, would work, it would work in any version because that directive, if it doesn't exist, is going to stop the program. It you, yeah. yeah if, that, if you're using, for example, Auto Hockey Classic, that doesn't have that directive, when you try to use it, it's going to tell you there's a syntax error and the script mm, is not going to run. That's <laughs> true. That's right. True, yeah. so, so, so basically, just the, the fact that you're using that stops your other versions. But in AutoHockey version 1 and 2, 
you put the version and if you say like 1.33 the, the switch command is a good example right it's a newer command that right a lot of people don't have and it it avoids people's doing stupid uh, stuff yeah so if you put this right there if i have version 1.32 it just stops the script and says like no you cannot run it because it checks on this version number here just Take a little time and and run and and verify what the requires directive does. I do like very... that because if I release something, I don't have to like tell them it. Uh, that I've only tested on this version. I can say, look, you you need this version, so I don't want to deal with anything else. You know? Exactly, that's good. So uh, what I wanted to do here, uh, let me just close this uh, folder, create a new file. Uh, let's just create a new file. Um, and what I wanted to do is uh, regex match variable test. And I'm going to put it in an object. I think this has to be like this. And I'm going to put it in the match object. Um, there we go. And var is going to be my test. That should match. Let's go ahead and save this file as desktop test.hk. That's it. And this is another hotkey script. I'm just going to stop right here. Uh, let's go ahead and message box match. Dot, I think the whole thing is like that. I think. Yeah. So if I go to my variables, my variable, I could see it. Notice that it says my test. The regular expression match here, it tells me that it's a regex match and it gives me a few things, but it doesn't give me the matching of it. Okay. It did match. I know that it matched, but I don't know where and the position lengths and everything is undefined. So basically I do not have access to the match objects memory. I have partial access to it. In our hotkey version two, um, the, the many people are afraid of version two because there's a few things that change. But once you understand why they changed and how similar they are to um, Auto Hotkey version one, they forget about it very easily. I forgot about it right away. You see that here, I had to say that I needed an object to get yeah. the object. In Auto Hotkey version two, is always an object. And what I'm pat passing here is a, an, a, a var reference. Is what it's called. It's not the address anymore. It's a bar reference. I'm familiar, yeah. So I, now, well, I was telling Joe, like, uh, I like a lot of the stuff in version two. It's right. just I have so many projects. It's the yeah, version yeah. But now I do. Uh, so notice I did a very minimal change to my code, yeah. and it still works. Okay. So let me let me actually just switch back to Auto Hot version two, by the way, um, so that it goes. Oh. One thing is I don't need to force expressions any longer. <laughs> cool. Um, and now uh, with version two, I do have a few more um, things now. And now I have not only my regular expression match information, which had the same things that we were looking at, like the count, the length and everything, which now I have the values of, okay? But also, I can see the array of where it matches. So, so I see my matches, okay? Yeah, it's a lot of stuff you can look at there. Right, which means that in this language, because it's using the language server, it actually has more information that we could access. That's the reason why I have been switching to AutoHotKey version 2, not only because um, I have noticed that it has... a, 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 a a lot of improvements in a lot of things, um, but also because the the uh, extension in Auto Hotkey version two is better. So the extension they, being better, it actually helps a lot. Yeah. Also, just show him because there was a way where you can say, "I always want to look at this variable," right? Like basically, you. Put oh yeah, the watch. Yes. So if I if you run, you know, if you're in debug mode, here on the left. You can add, you, I just double click the name, copy it, and I add an expression to watch, and it will always check on that variable. Because the thing is that, remember that in the global space, you might have a lot of variables, right? Yeah. 
So you might w- want to be checking a specific variable, and especially if you have a loop or something, you might want to be checking on that variable, how it changes and stuff like that. Uh, it has to be paused. When it is running, you're not going to see these guys, okay? And you have your call stack as well here. It tells you how you reached to that function. So it tells you the main thread, then this other function called this other function, and now you're in this location. Okay, so it tells you how you got there, what are your watch variables, the variables that you want to, you know, the all the variables in the program, and your breakpoints that you can click on them and jump to specific locations in your code where you have your... So it is really, again, there's so many things that I can tell you about this thing that I could go on and on. We should do at some point kind of like a, like a, um, uh, sorry, a, a, a video on that, Joe, because there's so many things that I could just go on and on about. Like, for example, I, I told you, making yeah. a course whole thing, right? Yeah. Like, this, this is, this is kind of like, we it's not a simple that. Has to one thing is the problem, right? There's so many things. There's so many details because um, there is, uh, for example, if I go ahead and open this guy here, this one here, this is one that I really love. Just think of it as when you have a class or something, especially a very long, big file, the outline here acts as an index. It is an index of your method, functions, um, labels. So it gives you kind of like a very quick overview of your program. When I, I mean, act, yeah, that would be really nice. It okay, is good, fun. especially when I go ahead and take a look at code from somebody else. And actually, well, what's, what's great earlier is I was showing you guys the functions in my class, but there was no easy way to show it. So I was just saying what they were as I went over them. But if I had that, I'd be like, well, here's the list. You can see. Yeah, you can see. Exactly. And actually, I remember I remember in one of the, um, and you can sort by name. So you could get a, a sorted list of, you know, the, the, the things that you can access. And actually, I remember we had a, a, live, a live session um, a few weeks ago, and we were modifying the class or the script from somebody else live right there. And, and uh, I think John said, like, I'm amazed at how easily you understand other people's code. And I'm like, it's not me. It's the tool. <laughs> the tool helps me. You know, I saw the list of stuff that I could do. I know more or less where. Oh, so he needed to modify an image or something. Well, I found a function that had maybe to do with that. I double click on it and it jumps to it. So now I just jump to that function. You see what I mean? So it is not only just viewing it, you can just double click on it and it jumps to that function. So yeah. now, and now I know like, okay, so let me read this function and what it does, but I didn't have to read the whole code. So again, after a little while, you're going to be missing a lot of stuff in other editors that you say like, nah, nah, I have to be here. I, I cannot do anything about it, you know? Um, so yeah. Uh, I sound like like a televangelist. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll just sign up for nine ninety five. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like I said, uh, you, you sold me on it. I'm definitely going to run this now. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, that debug, especially is like, oh my god, that's awesome. And now, and now, when you know that you have all that on the web because they have a web version of it, so that means at any point, if you just went out of your home, you're not at home and you need to check some code real quick, you don't have to install it in a different computer. You don't have to roll. Oh, one thing. You see, um, if you can show me your your, your, your screen real quick. Got four yep. minutes before I got to switch to the live. Oh, right. Yeah, true. Just FYI. Yeah, this is very quick. This is something that okay. it is very important um, to have for, you know, in general. It is about um, on the left. So if you click on, on your left the gear sign uh, the, the the gear icon oh, where did it go? uh the cog in the bottom left bottom left actually hold on yeah. give me a second uh, what why ah uh, here it is uh-huh so here you can just go ahead and um well not the not the gear but the one above the gear that okay, okay. Uh-huh. it says turn on settings sync that synch- synchronizes 
all your settings, your shortcuts, your snippets, your tasks, your extensions, everything, and, and how you left your UI as well. So to sign in, you, you, you click on sign in and you can sign in with your GitHub account. So with, 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 with GitHub, it allows you to sign in. That means that if you go to another computer and you sign in, all your hotkeys come with you. Because that's the one thing that I hate about this program. The hotkeys are especially convoluted because oh, there are mercy. many of them. There are yeah. many of them and they do not follow the standard that you're used to. I'm not gonna lie, I don't even use hockey. I click the little blue save icon every time. Yeah, but basically, but basically, um, um, the the standard hotkeys that we are used to on Notepad plus plus, like duplicating a line or moving a line, I I was used to something in there, and Control J, Control D for duplicating and stuff like that. It's not like that in here. In here, you have like combinations of hotkeys, like Control K, Control J, or something like that. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. So I switch all my hotkeys to what I'm used to, which is easy, by the way. But then I was like, oh man, when I go to another computer, I'm gonna lose it. No, you, you don't. Have a video on it, um, just to okay. make it. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, but basically, it's I was simple, like, it, it, it's you know, the video helps step you through it. Yeah. So right. we're gonna we're gonna stop here yeah, because we have, we have our, two minutes. We have a live call here. If in, if you want, I can send you a link if you're interested in joining. But it's a live. We do a live Friday. You know, help people. Um. So um I mean, if if I'm not going to impose, I don't mind. Oh, I yeah. love helping people. No, I got yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. And and and, and the, the more people we have that have other areas of expertise, the great, the better. Because there's some questions that I cannot answer. That's all. Like, <laughs> so it's a different meeting room. So let me stop this. Let me get a streaming. I'll send you the invite, and then um, I'm going to have a. Oh, hold on. Let me stop.